I'm Olivia Owens. I got next. You next up and you ain't been on sports like talk like what are you doing? <laughs> hey, you better hit him up. Look, you breaking next, you up next. Keep the wins on hard. Rise a star on the big team, make them know who you are. You don't break a sweat, don't set up for less. They put you through that test. Your resume that flesh. Who got next? Who got next? SLT, ready to say go. Who got next? Who got next? Living my dreams and all your goals. Who got next? Who got next? You can ask B Jones or head coach. Who got next? Who got next? Give it to me now. Give it to me now. Yeah! SLT Nation! What it do, fam? Welcome back to another fire episode of Sports Life Talks. You got next a platform that gives exposure to the voices of tomorrow. That's right. It is 2024, the year of the Mamba and KT and I. We are searching this country every nook and cranny and we are finding rising superstars, future phenoms, sensations, future all Americans who are doing big things and accomplishing big dreams. And today, Throw the O's up, ladies and gentlemen. We got one of the dopest. We got one of the dopest hoopers on this side of the Mississippi coming out of Paradise Valley, Arizona, all the way from Sea Town, Columbus, Ohio. And now she is back to back like Drizzy Drake, Joy 96 97, as one of the state champions in Arizona. Let's make some noise for the conference player of the year, 5'10 point guard out of Phoenix Country Day. Oh, oh, Olivia Owens. <laughs> hey, we go get it how we live today. Huh? Hey, ain't that right, Olivia? How Absolutely. You how you doing today? How you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. Today was a good day at school. And so I'm just, I'm super excited. Kevin, does this not seem like one of the kids that just don't stop smiling? You smile on the yes. court, you smile on the mic. She got the nice professional mic ready to go. Hey, check this out, Phoenix, Phoenix Country Day. We've been to Arizona a couple of We've been to Phoenix a couple of times, but this is our first time rocking with y'all. So welcome to the show. Welcome to the Sports Life Talk Experience. I am your host, the mouth of the South B. Jones, the OG, all things Louisiana. Put your L's up, Mr. Yee. Is in the building. I'm rocking alongside my brother from another mother. The other side of the logo, the choir storm. Shh. All facts, no cap. The head coach KT. Kev, how you feeling today, bro? B Jones, I was at school today as well, but you don't see me smiling like she is. Like, <laughs> just, you know, just saying. But to answer your question, B Jones, I feel great. We have a great player on here, man. So let's turn up. Let's turn up again for Arizona. We got a bucket. We got a bucket in the building, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to bless y'all today, but let's get this thing started with the moment of truth. This is the part of the show where we're going to play our version of two truths and a lie. That's right. Olivia, before the show, she's prepared three facts about herself, but here's the ringer. One of those facts is not the truth. That's right. She is going to try to trip up KT and I. So here's the difference. Well, here's the deal. KT and I will have 60 seconds to work as a team spitball some ideas some, some kind of calibrate and we're going to try to figure out which one of these truths that olivia brings forth is not a actual truth all right olivia it's your moment give us your three facts all righty um i've flown a plane i have one brother and i am a state champion in two sports oh man uh, All right, I, I think she's a ch state champion in two sports. I, I do think that one. The plain one, though, mm, that's a that's a rough one. What was number two again? I have one brother. One brother. She, she man, she can hoop though. <laughs> she got she gotta have more than one. Is, is your brother older or younger? Uh, older. <laughs> but she could have more than one older brother. Kt she could have more than the flying B Jones. That's that's kind of yeah. getting me. It, but, but nobody would come on here and say I flew on a plane if they ain't flown on a plane. Yes, they would. It's called a lie, B. Jones. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but some of these lies, you don't, you don't want people to be calling you out on, man. Some of these lies, you, you want the lie to be close to the truth, man. So you, do you think she flew on a plane, KT? You think she actually flew on a plane? I 
I can see her being like flying Delta one time and they'd be like, hey, kids, come to the cockpit. You can actually get that. <laughs> B. Jones, you let me go on the left. La- I don't know, man. Let's go with the one brother. Is that what you want to do? I think. Hey, you know, let's go with the one brother. All right. The, the, the lie is you have one older brother. That's right. Yeah. Oh! I have, I have two brothers. One older yeah! one younger. Yo, I knew, I, 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 you can't hoop like that. And not have more than one brother. We know you took your fat share of elbows and, yeah, and, 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 and busted up knees. That's what's up, KT. That's what winning. This is what winning feels like, KT. It's been so long. I think we were 17 and 34. <laughs> 17 what? and 34. We coming. We coming, though. It's, hey, we, we working hard. Okay. We working hard, Olivia. All right, y'all. This that time. Let's get this thing cracking. We're about to have a fire show. We're going to have a lot of fun. This is an amazing story. So you know what you got to do before you take any long car ride. Liv, you got to take that right hand. You got to reach over your left shoulder. We need you to grab that seatbelt and pull it down that strap. Click, clack, buckle up. We're about to go to work, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Sports Life Talk. And uh, this is what we need. We need everybody out there that's listening to the sound of my voice. We need you to get crunk. We need you to get get that yay, 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 yay excited. And we need you to do three big favors for us. That's right. On the count of three, we need you to help us to move a mountain. We call it the SLT Trinity. This the kicker, though. None of those involve any money. They are all three free things that you could do to help us to take this game on and take over on the Titans. Here we go. Number one, smash that subscribe button and become a part of the Sports Life Talk family. That's right. We're going to give y'all 180 episodes in the guests. Just like today, we got a five star. We got more five stars. We got more college coaches. This thing is going to be bananas. Number two, we need you to hit this like button. As many times as Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg will allow you to. Matter of fact, go create a new email address and then use your school email address account and come back in and like this episode as many times as you let they let you. So this show will just bubble all the way up to the top. And last but not least, number three, we need you to share this episode with as many people as you possibly can in your math class right now. Look to the people on your side of you and say, hey, I got something I want y'all to watch and send this show to them so we can let the world know we got to get the we got to run up the numbers on this joint. It's country day is the champion It's the new 2024 state champion Phoenix country day. Are they going to rock with us? Yes. Look, hey, simple. Say less. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, the legend that spoke. Here we go on the count of three. Let's do it like we true to it. Let's make some noise. One, two, three. Ooh, no. <laughs> let's go. Hey, welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the Sports Life Talk family. If you did any of those three things, we truly appreciate you. We want to show you some love. What is your favorite emoji that you're using right now, double O? My favorite one, Ooh, probably the laughing one. That's like crying, laughing and crying. The kids love to laugh and yeah. cry. I don't know. I don't know. We got to, we got to check on some of these kids. Here we go. <laughs> if you did any of those three, we need you to throw that laughing and crying emoji around here. KT and I, we don't do fans. We don't do followers. We only do family. And if you did any of those three things, we consider you family. So welcome to the Sports Life Talk family. If you do throw the, the laughing and crying emoji in the chat, what are we gonna tell them, KT? Thank you. That's right. Last show, he said gracias. So at least we back to saying thank you. <laughs> the, two, the two words. All right, Olivia, it is that time. We waited long enough. We're about to tell them how dope you are and how you became a phenom. But in order to figure out your story, we got to know what, what makes you tick, right? We got to figure out the secret sauce and uh, what, what makes you a human being. So let's tell them, your, let's tell them what, uh, what makes you tick. Here we go. Welcome to the Sports Life Talk. Initiation. All right, uh, Double O. To initiate you into the SLT family, you got to give us your top mm-hmm. five music artists. My top five music artists. Ooh, okay. So Drake, um, SZA, Beyonce. Uh, I'm gonna get Justin Bieber for sure. Uh, and then Taylor Swift because I also listen to her sometimes. So those are my top five. Kevin, I gotta ask Olivia because she seems like she's an open-minded, you know, seventeen-year-old. You seventeen, right? Are you sixteen? Seventeen, yeah. She seems like she's an open-minded seventeen. Do you listen to this K-pop? Do you listen to anything? The BTS, any of that? You, you don't listen to any of that stuff? Nah. Okay, all right. Because I, I got told that kids nowadays, I'm like, I ain't never heard no kid listening to that. But, but I'm glad I, you just substantiated that for me. But Kevin, she an all-American. And I'm telling you right now, she could probably drop 45 on your head. Good luck. What, she what, can't what, drop 45. I give her 30. 30. I give her 30. She ain't getting 45. 
Who she I'll, find, I'll find out before she get 40, DJ. <laughs> I'll let you know that now. <laughs> but back to the BTS, man. They got a song called Smooth Like Butter or Butter. Yeah, butter. That, that song go hard. All right, uh, Olivia, we like to rank everybody's top five, and the highest you can get is five. And you're not dropping 45 on me. I'm letting you know that right now. <laughs> but you know what we're going to give her, B. Jones? What you going to give her, man? Let's give her a smooth 20. Ooh. What's your favorite Justin Bieber song? Favorite Justin Never Say Never. That's no, I know word for never. word. Go no, go do it. Do it. Oh, I can't do that right now. I'm, I, mean, I cannot sing. You know, not want that from me. I'm, I'm gonna tell you what makes that song so special for me. That that was when Will Smith's son did the whole Karate mm-hmm. Kid thing, yeah. and you remember him in the video with uh, Justin Bieber. They would never say never. And they was doing the karate. That, that, that was just mm-hmm. a that was a total that was a total joint right then. I I, I dig the Never Say Never as well, but that ain't my favorite Justin Bieber song. No. <laughs> I need a little more grown than one I like. Yeah, you. <laughs> <laughs> he, he like that yummy. He like that yummy, Olivia. Mm, the yep, yeah, I like that one too. That was a good song. Right, that song go hard. That's why I say it's mm-hmm. cool. I'm sorry. All right. All right. So, who is your favorite superhero and why? Spider Man, mainly because I'm, I'm a big fan of Tom Holland and like Zendaya. So, <laughs> I've kind of followed that the new recent Marvel universe of that Spider Man. Sure, you and uh, Zendaya about the same height. I think she made right. about like an inch, but yeah, y'all the same height. All right. So since every good superhero needs their own theme music, what would your theme song be? My theme song, "Worth the Fight" by Five Alarm. It's a it's a very like I don't think many people know this song, but don't nobody uh, know. <laughs> Just follow along with their parents. Now, you, you don't have to sing it, but can you hum it? Uh, a little bit. It's like, mm-mm, the, 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 and it just, yeah. I'm not, I can't, my musical talents are, don't go far. I knew she wasn't going to sing it, so I just can't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, wait a minute. Where, where's five? I've never heard of this five along. Kevin, I know you ain't heard of no five. Don't even start lying on it. That, it, it what, what, no, they, I haven't heard of him. Are they popular, Olivia? Probably. Not really. I honestly just like the song. I haven't really done too much research. Okay, okay. On like the band, you, just, you, so. you just heard that one joint and you like, okay, yeah. that, that's, that's a bar. I, I can dig that. And B. Jones, you're going to stop hating on me and my music. I know a lot of music. I don't know that one, though. I, <laughs> I, give, you, I give you credit, Kevin. You you know more music than, than most people do. You used to work in the Sam Goody for... Look, the kid's like, Sam Goody? What is Sam? Kevin used to work in the music store. That's back back in the day. Like when eight like, years I worked there, so I learned a lot of different music. That's All right, so... We have a running debate on this show. Mm-hmm. I would rather be a singer. B. Jones would rather be a dancer. So we need for you to break the tie on this episode. Mm. Would you rather be a singer or a dancer? I'd rather be a singer. Yeah, I feel like you could wait way more money being a singer than a dancer. See, that she go thinking NIL money. You know what I'm there saying? You know. thinking dollars. You know what I'm saying? But just, just for pure, pure pleasure. Just pure pleasure. If you if you can only do this by yourself in your own room, which one would you rather be? A cold dancer or would you rather be a cold singer? You need to sing because I can hear myself, you know? You don't always see yourself when you're dancing. Buy a full-length mirror. (laughs) 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 You said that was personal. Good news. I did. I'm tired of y'all saying singing. I need all my dancing. Like she said, you can make Uh, more money. One out of every three will say dancing, though. One out of every three will say dancing. Most all all Americans say dancing. You know, you do... You don't know all American is that thing. It's okay. <laughs> so, whatever. <laughs> all right. so what is something that basketball has taught you that you can use when you're not on the court? Uh, just to persevere. That's like the biggest thing for me. Um, perseverance and just showing how tough you are too is that each obstacle comes with a challenge, but each time you're able to overcome it, it just shows you who you are as a person. All right. So are there a player that you fell in love with and what is it about them that you admire? Definitely Stephen Curry. Steph Curry's my he's my favorite player. I've idolized him since a young age. Um, I think just about him is him being the underdog. I was seen as the underdog when I was younger. A lot of people doubted me, um, maybe because I wasn't as big as I am today. I was more on the smaller side. So I related to him a lot back then, and that just kind of why I look up to him so much. All right, so this is probably the most important question I asked during the initiation because B. Jones and I, we love to travel. When you travel, you got to eat. Mm-hmm. So, Olivia, when we come down there to check you out, what's that one food spot you're going to recommend and what is your go-to meal there? 
Little Miss Barbecue. It's like a little shack. It's it has the best brisket you will ever have in your life, and I think I can say that confidently. Uh, and their ribs are pretty good, so I'll I'll probably get like half a pound of brisket and half a pound of ribs. Ain't uh, no way you eating all that lamb. Oh, no, uh -huh. that's a pound of meat. Mm -hmm. how, how much you weigh, Liv? Because I I know you're I'm strong. I'm forty. I you can I I can destroy some barbecue. You put some barbecue in front of me, oh, I'll be eating that. <laughs> Hey, Kevin, well, I can't wait to go to Phoenix. <laughs> you ain't lying. We definitely Live going. Live me like that. We going, we going to Phoenix. It's so good. It is so good. All right. So today we have a rising star in the world of high school girls basketball whose dedication, grit, and passion for the game are nothing short of inspiring. Get ready to be motivated and entertained as we explore the triumphs and challenges of this exceptional athlete's journey. So let's jump into the world of high school sports. So B. Jones, go ahead and take it away, brother. Man, we're going further than, than, than just high school sports. We're jumping into the to the world of one of the best players in the country. And I'm telling y'all, write the name down right now because this young lady is a walking bucket. And uh, we are only a few years away for her name. But we're we going to be able to watch this young female play on ESPN here uh, pretty soon. But Olivia, every every superhero has their journey, right? Every, everybody had to start out from somewhere. Since you a Spider-Man fan, that means you got bit by a spider in a factory so Somewhere. So tell tell us about your origin story. When did you start playing basketball, or when did you fall in love with the game? Uh, I started playing basketball in a church league when I was five. Uh, I was on an all boys team with my older brother, uh, and from that, I just learned definitely toughness. Uh, I remember getting my my first tooth knocked out playing basketball. My mom tells me the story all the time, and she's like, "You got your tooth knocked out, and you just wanted to get back in the game. You didn't worry about the blood or anything that was coming out." Um, and then I just continued to play basketball from there. And I really fell in love with it, uh, watching. I actually felt my first favorite player was Blake Griffin. And I remember watching an uh, NBA All-Star game and watching him dunk and everything. I was a little, definitely a tomboy when I was younger. So my parents got us this like little tiny hoop. And so I'd be practicing like Blake Griffin dunks on the hoop. And so that's when I really fell in love with it. Um, and then from there, I just kept growing. And my dad also played in high school. So uh, I should be definitely shared the love of basketball. Um, and just over the years, just building up skill, um, waking up sat early Saturday mornings to get better. Uh, it just, yeah, just getting better every single day was my top goal. And I would, I remember just going on YouTube and looking up videos of how to do certain moves and then practicing at recess at school, playing with the boys uh, for basketball. And I think that just really like grew my, my love for basketball, my passion for it. Um, and then I moved out here shortly after COVID, like, August 2020 um, and so East Coast basketball is way different than West Coast basketball that's for sure uh, so I definitely say East Coast is a lot more aggressive a lot more physical than it is over here um, but I just continue to play my game when I moved over here and I think that's kind of separated me and definitely was, people saw me as different um, mainly just because of that experience on the East Coast uh, and then I just continue to work hard at it um, continue to push myself every single day and I think that just got me to where I am now just trying to continue to keep that up and continue going into the summer last season of AAU um, but yeah I was kind of like just a little skim of my basketball journey so far now I got the opportunity to watch your highlights I hadn't seen you do your thing in real life trust me when I say I cannot wait to get to the Under Armour tournaments in the circuit this year so I get to finally see you get some buckets up and see you do your thing but watching your highlights you definitely remind me of a Kalia Copper I, 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 who do you who do you see in your game who, like when you when you out there playing and you watch yourself play who is somebody that you you emulate or, or that you look up to and you like man this is the kind of style I want to bring to the game Oh, um, I, I really like Diana Taurasi's style. It's very, like, kind of relaxed, but she attacks at certain moments. Um, and, like, you can see that in her game. And she uh, chooses her shots wisely and when to kick it and when to take her own. Uh, so definitely that. A little bit of Chris Paul sometimes. I like making some nice passes. So whenever just distributing the ball out or be able to see the floor in transition. Uh, but that's just, like, who I try to, to, to copy my game after. It's funny you said Diana Taurasi because that was one thing I did pick up on your highlights. Nothing seems overkill. Nothing seems exaggerated. It's like you smoother than peanut butter, little sis. I mean, it's like even, even your J. It's just like, hey, I'm going to bust your head. 
<laughs> you know what I'm talking about? It's like you never really seem like you exerting a lot of a lot of energy when you playing. I mean, how, how would you describe your playing style? Is it is it is it a is it aggressive? Because you're real strong too. When you you your body, I mean, you you body them, <laughs> them young ladies out there in Arizona. I mean, how, how do you describe your style? I definitely like describe it as I kind of get to a, a three levels. Just be able to attack, uh, but being strategic when you attack. Um, and seeing the lanes and at certain t- points of the game, uh, I think something that just I've learned is that you don't need to take it in every single time. You don't need to shoot the three every single time. Um, you can, you know, find the mid range, find your shot in there. Um, so I would like say it is like relaxed, calm, um, but like fast too and aggressive. So just picking and choosing um, when to exert my energy and when to just lay back on it. Now you mentioned a couple of names, the Blake Griffins, the 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 Diana Tarasis. If I gave you the opportunity to play one player one on one, who 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 would it be? Probably Diana Tarasi. Now you know who I thought you was gonna say? Kyrie Irving, because I saw Ooh. I saw the picture with you and Kyrie Irving. I was like, I know she's been a challenge. I broke his ankles. I didn't really break his, but I got him confused. <laughs> I have a video of, him, of me like crossing it up a little bit. Ooh, what, what was it like meeting Kyrie? Because every kid comes, oh. I, when I, and I say every nine out of ten kids come on here and show love to Kyrie. It is some, that dude is really uh, he he on the Mount Rushmore for this generation of, of basketball yeah. future talent. But uh, what, what what was it like meeting Kyrie and being a part of that camp? I uh, definitely that hands down one of the best experiences of my life. Um, I got invited to the camp kind of last minute. Um, I was actually supposed to be playing a tournament, and so I was like, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to meet Kyrie Irving. Um, so me and my family, we drove out to LA where the camp was being held and he was just an amazing person. Like absolutely amazing. Uh, just, he was given on court instruction. He was like in the camp. Um, a lot of people were there too, but he was being the one like running the drills, um, be doing the drills with us, defending us. And then afterwards we did a film session with him and we watched some of his games and what his mental breakdown is when he's doing certain moves in the game um and then we got to like hang out with him too over the weekend so we actually he rented out like Dave and Buster's and so we got to see like the fun side of him and his dad was there too so my parents got to talk to his dad about the journey and how to like guide your kid to to stardom and stuff like that um but yeah he was just hands down like a down-to-earth person um he just wants the best for everybody and I think a lot of the media sometimes like messes him up but he's really he's really he's just an amazing person and uh, he does a lot of stuff for a lot of people, and it's awesome. Well, sports life talk don't mess with. We show them with love for Kyrie. Uh, and now I, I I fell in love with the class of twenty five, Olivia. I fe- I fell in love so much with the class of twenty five that I went on record multiple times, and I've told everybody that crossed paths with me that your class is not only going to be the best the best basketball players that come out, but you guys are going to reinvent women's basketball that's right all the way i'm talking about the 25 is crazy Mm -hmm. but when you look around the the class of 25 and you see how how much talent i mean how special is it to be a part of something uh, to be a part of what i consider this new movement of women's basketball because you do things totally different than what we saw some of the kids in 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 yesterdays and the yesteryears do you guys doing things different and you are one of those individuals that I mean, you make this stuff look good, Olivia. I mean, you make, you make basketball look fun and creative and, and like a, a like a true art form. What is it like going out there playing? And what, what are you thinking between the between the whistles? Oh, uh, me mainly. I'm just going out there to have fun. Uh, I think that's what our class mainly is doing. We're going out there to compete, have fun, um, kind of like just bringing back that like area of game because I think for a while it's been a lot of highlight culture. Um, but for us, we're just going out to play and we're not always seeking a highlight, but just going out to win is, is pretty big. Um, and I just, I'm, I'm grateful to be a part of this class because we look up to so many other people. Um, and so I think it's also like the work of people that come before us and just wanting to be good, but not at, or just as good, if not better, um, than those people. So I think it's our, our hard work too, and our strive for that. Well, you strive for a lot, and she says she ain't looking for the highlight moments, but you make a lot of them. <laughs> and uh, some of those highlights is, uh, is is going back to back winning the state championship. It's it's tough to win one championship, uh, but then you go into this next season and you like, hey, now the crosshair is on our back. Everybody's chasing us. Phoenix Country Day School is the best school in the state, and they know how cold we are. And you got you got a tag team partner over there, six eight running mate, that y'all doing some crazy things on the court. What was this season? 
it like? Uh, how, how did you guys prepare? How did you guys perform? And, and what was it like going through and winning that ring? Not once, but twice. It was awesome. Uh, honestly, this season started off a little rocky. I actually sprained my ankle in practice pretty early on. So I missed our first, I think, like six or seven games. Um, so it was definitely hard for me to just watch from the bench and for everyone else to find a flow just without me being on the court. Um, but they did, which was great. And then we started our season. We went into TOC. Um, we went two and two in TOC. But I think that definitely boosted our confidence because we beat some teams that, you know, people didn't think we were going to win. Um, and then January, February, we just continued to dominate, didn't lose a game. Uh, and I think that when it's, it's the, the horn went off for that for that game, I think when we all ran on the court, it was just like we felt that being special and a special moment for all of us. Um, especially just to be able to, to do it back to back, knowing that you still had it, you still are the best. Um, there's like no other feeling like that. There's a lot of people watching this, Olivia. Yeah. Is it three peat in the future? Is it, uh, are we gonna call our shot right now? We go. Hey, we 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 holding up them threes. We are. I, I called it. Uh, I was interviewed right after it. I called it right after that. I said we're going back to back to back. That's what we're that's what we're gonna do. Next time we see a picture with Olivia on the show, she's gonna be on that trophy with the with the with the three fingers up there. That's that's uh that's super dope. Now let's talk a little bit about the transition from Ohio because you, you you brought in a point and I, I we we learning Kevin and I we do shows all across this country. I'm talking about it. It's not a pocket we ain't talk to athletes and you are one thousand percent. I mean it is it, it is uh it's it's a much physical game on the East Coast, but the West Coast is fast. And uh, you, you know what I'm saying? You, you got to have some. You got to have some skills to, to play because uh, it, it ain't a bruising game. And, and you bring that bruising style game. What, what was that move from from Ohio to Phoenix like for you? I mean, did you did you find it tough to adjust, or was it a was it like hey, like you said, I was special, I was different, and I found my home pretty quickly? Um, yeah, I thought it was it was easy but tough at the same time. I think it was tough just because leaving my friends behind in Ohio, I've known them since I was like five years old. Um, so that was definitely tough. But the basketball side of it was easy for me. Um, that's how I was able to fit in with everybody else and like get friends from there. So my dad uh, got a job here. My mom, some, all of her nieces and nephews are here. So it made sense for us to move here. Um, and so the way that I got connected through basketball was somebody, one of my friends here had also lived in Ohio and her older sister trained with the trainers I trained with. So, uh, our trainers connected and, uh, they actually, the day that I moved here, I went to a practice. Like I flew in at like 12 and then like that night at like 7 PM, I was at a basketball practice. Um, and so from there we just kind of, uh, I meshed together with the girls really well. And we went into a tournament as an eighth grade team. We were beating high schoolers, um, shocking like a lot of different teams and a lot of different people. So we got a lot of like uh, media around that. And then we went into made hoops, uh, middle school tournament, and we did pretty good. We kind of had a fall off at the end of the season. Um, and then I found a prep team that I played for. Uh, so I played prep there. Um, but going back to like the East Coast, West Coast basketball, uh, definitely fast here um and less aggressive i will say the refs do not let you like touch the other person at yeah. all not like no two hands no nothing and i just remember in ohio i could get tackled on the court and it <laughs> wouldn't be a foul like i just get up and go play defense you know so those are like the two main differences for me that i've seen so far um but it's been so much fun just learning a different style of game over here too um, and you just see it in colleges too. There's the the different level of play, which is insane. Now, how much older is your older brother? He's almost two years older than me. Okay, so he really did put it on you. <laughs> did y'all y'all had some wars? Is is he taller than you? Or what is no, the I'm taller. I'm t I'm two inches taller. Ah, <laughs> uh, so you be working them over. Oh, that's cold blooded. Who, who went at one on one? Who went at one on one? Go on, call. you get him. You get ah, that's what's up. You hey, stopped playing up? me about five years ago, so I play my younger brother now. But <laughs> <laughs> all right, so so now you're a class of twenty five, which means that you know this summer you're gonna run with uh, with West Coast Elite, and then you're gonna go into your senior year chasing this three peat. But uh, but I'm pretty sure coaches have already started calling you, and you probably already start having some conversations. As, as a matter of fact, y'all y'all go to her, her, her Twitter page or her X page, you go see this page of interest and offers that. Uh, 
is pretty pretty salty. I'm talking about you you got some heavy heavy hitting schools. I'm talking about Power 5, the smart schools, everything. You can pick you can pick kind of where you want to go in the part of this country. Now have y'all kind of thought about what you're looking for in a school and kind of which direction is, is uh, are, are we thinking about heading back to the East Coast or we or we want to stay out there in that 110 degree weather on the <laughs> on the West Coast where it never rained. Have, have y'all really thought about this recruiting process and what y'all are looking for? Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. My parents and I have sat down and had multiple conversations. Uh, I'm really open to going anywhere, honestly. I like to explore. Um, but it it is it is getting real now, going into senior year. So I'm definitely having to narrow down my list. Um, and it definitely is hard. Uh, just trying to take visits this year, probably, and just go see a bunch of different places and see what I want. But I'm definitely looking forward just to, to spend it my four years with with some awesome people who helped me grow and just continue to develop me as a basketball player and a person. Is, is, is there anything in particular in this school you're looking for? Is it going to be like history or is it going to be uh, NIL opportunities? Is it going to be education going to a specific school based off of, of what kind of schooling you can get? Is there anything in particular you're looking for to, to call your next home? I definitely want best of both worlds, um, basketball and education. Um, I want to study architecture and engineering. So definitely a school that has that major and can help me with that. Uh, but other than that, just best of both worlds is, is the biggest thing for me. I'm going to give you a hundred thousand dollar NIL deal, any company in the world, but it can't be a sneaker company. So it can't be a shoe deal. Cause we know the shoe, the shoe companies do things a little bit differently. So you get to represent any company you want. We're going to cut you a hundred thousand dollar check. Who, who would you want to represent Lil? Oh my gosh. It's probably going to be like Chick-fil-A, honestly, because <laughs> I'm going to need to eat. <laughs> hey, you be like, y'all hungry? Let's, let's all go get us. <laughs> Let's all go get us. Some, let's go get some tenders. All right, last question. Seventeen-year-old Olivia, what are you doing for fun? Now you surfing? I ain't no water out there in Phoenix. I don't know what I'm talking about. What are you rollerblading? What you shopping? What what are you what are you doing for fun uh, during your downtime when it's when it's not basketball related? I actually build Legos and I watch a lot of TV. So like, I'll put suits on and I like build a new Lego set that I have. Uh, more, I'll just hang out with my brothers. It's just fun hanging out with family, play some board games. Or rough house just depends on what the mood is. <laughs> you a Lego master? What, what's your What's your best Lego creation you never done? Uh, I had the Taj Mahal. It's actually it's, I don't know if you can see it, but no, nah, uh, all, all we all we can see is championship plaques. Uh, back there, oh. that's all, that's all we see. Ooh, I'll try not to drop it. <laughs> Dang, you did that on Legos? Yeah, Kevin, are you seeing it? That is absolutely nuts. That's crazy. You know what your next challenge ought to be? Do that. Do that. Uh, reproduce that championship ball. See if you see if you can reproduce the championship yeah. ball uh, in Legos. That'll be absolutely bananas. All right, let's go to work. Oh, oh, big O. Oh, welcome to the Sports Life Talks version of Would You Rather. Welcome to the championship yeah. rounds. This is the part of the show with KT and I. We're going to do a little bit of one-on-one, -on -one, and you are now officially calling all the shots. And y'all know we played Would You Rather a little bit earlier today, except this time we're going to put it on the steroids, okay? So we're going to go three rounds, and in each round, both KT and I are going to make a pitch, give you a scenario. Whichever one of those pitches you uh, accept or you like the most, you select that host, and that host will get a point. The first host to get two points, or the best out of three will win this episode game of championship rounds. All right, KT is a defending champion. I don't know what Jackie Anderson was thinking, but <laughs> KT pulled it off. So, uh, so <laughs> I think I think you you won the last three, any KT? Two or three? Man, I think this count, is, man, I just take a game I'm by count. game. I'm counting because I'm tired of y'all coming on the show and uh, and cheating. All right, here we go. Here we go, Olivia. Round number one. All right, you said you want to go back to back to back. So you're in a semifinal game. Your team gets a defensive stop. Your coach calls a play for you, and with the you look up at the clock, and with the time expiring, you knock down the game winning three to send your team back to the state final. Or, or we're gonna put you in the same scenario with ten seconds left, except this time, instead of y'all making a defensive stop as a team, you are guarding a best player. They dribbling the ball down, you rip them. At the half court mark, you look up, and the other young lady, the other stud on your team, what's her name, Ayla? Ayla is streaking down the court. You throw the ball to her, she catches it, lays it up, buzzer sounds. Phoenix Country Day School wins again. You mm -hmm. this, this time you credited with the assist and the steal. Game. I'm gonna have to go with yours, B. Jones. <laughs> oh, 
Oh! 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 Point guard. I knew I should have did something. <laughs> Hey, I, I, you know, I'm feeling good, but I won the first round last game, and then I couldn't win another bucket after that. So here we go. Here we go. Round number two. Nobody, you know, I ain't going to say nobody, but y'all doing something amazing out there in Phoenix that not too many people know about nationwide, right? Y'all are popular right there in your hometown, but I'm going to get a documentary crew together. I'm going to get a, a, a camera crew together. We come into Phoenix Country Day School, and we are going to do a, 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 a Netflix documentary, almost kind of like Last Chance. Year. We're going to film you guys in the weight room, the practice courts, the on the bus, in the hotels. We are literally going to film y'all for through the whole year as y'all go on this miraculous journey. To three Pete, and we're gonna call it three the hard way. You hear me with this? So, so we're gonna we gonna basically show it all to the world what it looked like from beginning to the end. Or mm -hmm. so I'm gonna give you the opportunity to, to travel and eat while you host your own show on TikTok. You could get to interview other high school players, get to know more about them while eating in some of the best places in the world. I'm going with KT's. I love food. He said food and now got me. Oh. She's talking about that barbecue earlier, B. Jones. I knew I, I could get it. I cannot believe she passed on the Netflix documentary. Come on. Oh. She <sighs> can travel and eat, B. Jones. He said food. He got to eat. I know. I know. It ain't that much brisket in the world, though. <laughs> I got I could try some other ones, you know, but I still stick with mine. All right, all right. We're going to let you ride. Let's go. Let's go. Round three. Tiebreaker. All right, Olivia. Round three is pretty simple. B. Jones and I, we stopped talking. We let the shoes that we brought today speak for us. So what we're going to do for round three, B. Jones brought a pair of shoes. I brought a pair of shoes that we feel represents you. So for this one, it has huge ramifications because whoever wins this, gets this point, wins this episode's game. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to count down from three. When I do that, I need for you to say, hold that sneaker. When you do that, we're going to show you what we brought today, okay? Got it. You ready? Yes, sir. Three, two, one. Hold that sneaker. <laughs> I had to go Jays. I went with something classic. I said, you know what? She, she 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 looked like Jordan out there on that floor. I'm a Jordan fan. I had to give her something iconic with a unique colorway oh. that matches the country day uniform, by the way. Well, I know. I've, I've seen some of her pictures, and she has some, like, colorful shoes on, B. Jones. So I like they, colorful shoes. They, all wear, they all wear colorful shoes nowadays. We're not talking about Olivia. We're not talking about anybody else. We're talking about Olivia. Oh. I would say I'm more of an old school, so I'm gonna go with B. Jones shoes. But I like the what? colorway. I like the colorway. You tell me you like the colorway. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Oh my goodness! Made it feel good to be back in that W collar. Oh, you know what I'm saying? You a champ? I'm a champ, and it just it's <laughs> off the chain. It's off the chain. We clicking. You know what I'm saying? We click. This has been a great episode. This has been a great episode. Uh, it, it was okay. Oh. <laughs> oh. It's been pretty good. It's been pretty good. Olivia, <laughs> I'm in my feelings right now. I'll say it's better later on, but right now, it's a okay. oh. oh man, that's a that's a big hey. That's a lot of weight off my off my back, y'all. I'm just I'm just letting you know. Let's just let's just soak in this moment all together as a family. Now we can move on. Let's move on. I'm done I'm coping. I'm done coping. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> yes. All right, oh, oh. Let's go, Double O. The title of the show is you got next. So we want, we talked about the past. We talked about the move. We talked about how you are in Phoenix Country Day. Y'all taking over the, the state, winning championship after championship. But but there's a lot of road left in front of you, little sis. Mm -hmm. the, the point of this show is to inspire and to motivate others so they can know about your journey. What is what is the, what does the future look like for you? What do you see up next for yourself, Olivia? Uh, going to go play college and then hopefully go play pro either overseas or in the WNBA. That's always been my dream. Um, so I'm still going after it, still working hard for it, uh, making sacrifices to do that. And I just can't wait, honestly, just to continue to work hard and be on the grind. Kevin, it breaks my heart when they say play overseas. It just, there's no reason why we shouldn't have 30 WNBA teams so all of these amazing young ladies have opportunities. 144 roster slots ain't enough. But by because the time you, it gets of I age, you'll so. be more teams. I hope so. Be more teams. I, hope so. I, pr I pray that it is. Now, what number do you wear, Olivia? I wear 24. 
That's what. That's what. I, that's what. Because I, I, I got. I got to ask you. It's the year of the Mamba. Why? Why did you choose that number twenty four? Uh, my dad wore 24 in high school. Uh, it's just like a family number, and so did my uncle. Uh, he actually passed away uh, in a helicopter crash as well, too. Um, so that's why I wear it for him, for my brother, for my mom's brother. Um, but it's it's definitely a family number for us, and it has a lot of meaning behind it. Wow, man, that's all right, KT. I know. All right, so do you have any shout outs you want to give? Yes, shout out to all my teammates, uh, PCDS, West Coast Elite. Shout out to my trainers from Ohio, uh, Coach Shaq, Coach Tanya, Coach CC, Coach Dan, all of them. I think they really uh, put in a, a route for me um, to just like continue to something to start off in a base. Um, and they're people I can always go back to and text and just call up. Shout out Coach Benson too. Um, my parents especially, all they put in. Um, for me, all the, the road trips, the travel, the money, because it's a lot of money spent um, to my brothers, just always annoying me and just wanting me to prove them wrong every single time. So a big shout out to them. Um, and then shout out to all the people I've, I've worked out with over the past years who are now in college and have pushed me and helped me get better and given me insight on what college is like. So just shout out to all those people who have been a part of my journey. All right, so this is the part of the show where you get a chance to call the person that you think should have next. Tell me, hey, I got a chance with Rocker B. Jones and KT. I told them my story. Why don't you do the same thing? With that said, Olivia, who you calling out? Who should have next? I'm calling out Heather Stedman. Tell us about Heather Stedman. Heather Stedman, she, uh, her, her, she was the one that kind of I got connected with to come play here in Arizona. So I think without her and her family that I wouldn't be in the, the spot I am today. Heather's a great basketball player. She's probably six foot. Um, they actually made it to the open semifinals. Um, she had, she had a, a rough game, but she's a person that will just push through. So definitely shout out to her. I've been playing with her since eighth grade. So it's we definitely build a friendship on that. Heather Stedman, tell the world that you are up next. Your ticket just got punched. You are officially on the clock. We can't wait to have you on the show in the year to mama. Kevin, she sound like a mama to me. Did she sound like a mama to you? It said sound like she, yeah, she, 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 she do sound like a mama, B. Jones. I'm still in my feelings, but yeah, she does sound like a mama. <laughs> and she sound like somebody who knows her tennis. So I can't wait to see you, Heather. We can't wait to have you. I, on I don't show. agree on that, but yeah, let's keep going. <laughs> Double O Olivia Owens, you got next you are the truth young lady you are uh, just amazing you are uh, charismatic you are genuine you are authentic you are one of one you are trailblazer a superstar future phenom you are extraordinary and elite you deserve a yeet Oh my God, back at it again. This has been a gangster episode here, y'all. I mean, we, we won the moment of truth. I got the belt back. I don't know. Don't, hey, uh, hey, you sure you don't want to be a dancer? You can make this thing perfect if you just want to. I'm a singer. Ah, nah, I'm a come, come on, Lydia. Hey, well, we're going to wish all of y'all out there at Phoenix Country Day the best of luck. Okay, we got to go out there and see them play one time next year. We're going we to try to get out to a Phoenix Country, a PCDS game on y'all journey for three. And uh, all of y'all who supported us and watched this episode we want to thank y'all for watching another fire episode of sports life talks you got next we appreciate it so much we can't do this without you this is your moment to become the mvp we need y'all to help us to lift this torch up and to take young superstars like this and spread the word and you can do it all you got to do is smash that subscribe button, smash that like button, and share this episode as many times as you possibly can. And make sure you're tapped in with KT and I. We're working super hard, and we're going to keep giving y'all so much content. We got some new stuff coming your way that we think you know, is going to be very, very fun and very inspirational motivation for you guys to watch. So uh, make sure you tap in with us at Sports Life Talk, all one word. We don't know what's like talking the game. You ain't gonna confuse us with nobody else. And if you want, now Heather Stedman sound like a beast. I'm sorry. She sounds like she a bucket. She sounds like she can put something on somebody. Uh, but if you think you got the juice, if you got that flavor, if you a mamba and you want to come on the show, go to our website, SLT, you got next.com. Click on the nominate tab. Tell us a little bit about yourself and why you feel like you got next. And KT is going to schedule you an audition to be on the show. And it's just that, Kevin, I don't feel like 
like enough people reaching out to us to get on the show. Well, it's only two of us. We can't find everybody. We we get lucky when we see Olivia come across with these ESPN highlights. We like, hey, we got to get on the show. Everybody ain't going like that. So if you got a story, you better let us know about it so we can find you now. And last but not least, I know it's a lot of y'all that's on YouTube twenty four seven, but I'm a podcast junkie. So if you're a podcast junkie like myself and you like to listen to these shows on the road or, or, or have the audio playing in the background while you're trying to do your work or while you're cooking, make sure you download the You Got Next podcast, wherever you are downloading your podcast, whether that's Spotify, Apple, and listen to the smooth, sultry sounds of the mouth of the South B. Jones and the velvet tones of the head coach KT anywhere you can listen to podcasts, Kevin. Hey man, thank you. I got I got the belt back. And you know what I'm saying? Y'all can't see. I'm shaking his hand right now, though. But uh, you know, we, it was a good episode, Kevin. You had a good run. You had a good run. It was time to come home, but I'm gonna let you close us out, man. Let's go. Well, I did go back to back to back, and I'm hoping the same for Olivia next Absolutely. season. Hey, Olivia, thank you so much for rocking with us. Whatever you need from us, please let us know, and we got your back. Of course. Thank you, you so wanna, much for having me. You want to hum that five alarm again? <laughs> Hell no, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. We don't need to do that. We don't need to run that right, back. Show, show him that J, Olivia. Show, show him that J. Oh, <laughs> there it is. She went with it. Sports Life Talk Nation. We love y'all. Stay safe. Be blessed. Respect each other and love one another because together we are better and keep dreaming big because you never know. Your story may be the next one featured on Sports Life Talks. You got next. Yeet. I knew you had next because you always working, you always grinding, you're in your bag because you're always working. Like in due time, I just I knew you got next. Oh, you did it, huh? Crack the code. You got next, you smashing goals. You want next, you need exposure. Well, sports like talk, got the baddest show, like the baddest hut in the room. Podcast is tuning to just for you to talk your shit. Talk your mushroom, you want what you eat and you should consume. Sports like talk from the late night to the afternoon, then rest repeat. Hit the like, leave a comment, or subscribe so you don't miss a beat. You got next, is a small taste of a winning meal from a chef type of celebrity. What's up next is you, at least you better be. Yeah, you got next, yeah. I can feel it, oh, winner just like me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sports life talking this.